six of the statistics unit for F for one, and we're going to talk about box and whisker. Uh, my my point here is to focus on things that are you know real really uh, um, inten uh, intensive on what a box and whisker plot is and how we compare them and and look at them. Um, and also being able to create one is the is the big thing. A couple of things we need to know about box and whisker plot and while I'm going to be keeping this on this screen, I'm going to be filling out the next uh, slide as we go. So the lower extreme is the minimum value. And so when we put this information in, this is our min x. And we call that the lower extreme. It's this point right here. Uh, the the uh, upper extreme is the maximum value. So we got max x right here. And so we use this to be able to calculate range, which is what we've been talking about with the other stats issues. And what a box and whisker plot does is it breaks a set of data into 25% chunks. So this data right here is 25% of the data. This here is 25% of the data. This is 25% of the data. And this is 25% of the data. And so it breaks it in, it breaks all of our data into four chunks so that we can talk about the data and compare it, um, you know, in, in that, in the, in that, in that uh, way. So the way we make a box and whisker plot is we have to find the uh, values of the splits. And so we call those quartiles. And when we calculated the one variable stats, I showed you this, you know, that we had min, Q1, a median, Q3, and then a max, okay? And so what I want to talk about is this line right here. This is what we call the median. This is the point at which half of the data is going to be this way and half of the data is going to be that way. So in this particular example, let's say we had um, uh, 10 data points. Five of them are going to be on this side and five of them are going to be on this side. And you can take any number, and, like if I said 15, well, seven would be on this side and seven would be on that side, and I would have one right in the middle. And so, you know, we, we call this the second quartile. So the second quartile is the median, and it breaks the data up into two separate halves. Um, you know, here we have what we call the first quartile, and then here we have what we call the third quartile. All right. <clears throat> um, so we talked about the first quartile, and that's, of course, the, uh, the median of the lower half. We talked about the third quartile as being the median of the upper half. And so then um, we've talked about the, the fact that the range is the maximum value minus the minimum value. And then the inner quartile range is the Q1 value minus the Q3, or the Q3 minus the Q1. And so, um, you know, we have, I'm going to go ahead and show you that and talk about it again just a little bit. But again, you know, we have the max and the min, and that's how we calculate the range. We have the third quartile and the first quartile, and that's how we calculate the inner quartile range. So if you need to, pause this so you can get these notes down. So let's, let's talk about a box and whisker plot in the, you know, the one that we had from the front. Um, we have to be able to identify by looking at a box and whisker plot or more than one box and whisker plot um, a couple things. Uh, we have to be able to identify the minimum and if we marked it on the front. But the minimum, again, is the left bound and so this has a minimum of 5. The maximum is the right bound, so this has a maximum of 20. Q1 is the left bound of the box, and so Q1 is 8.5. Q2, or the median, is the middle of the box, 
and that's 12. Q3 is the right bound of the box, and so that's 14. So again, we want to talk about if no matter how many data points I have, the split of the data is at 12. So 50% of the data is less than 12, 50% of the data is greater than 12. So when, when we talk about that, we want to make sure we understand that first of all. But also we use it so that we can determine range and we can compare it to other sets of data. Um, and so I've got you calculating these two range things here. Uh, so the range again is max minus min, which we have here. And the interquartile range is Q th just the range of the box. And so that interquartile range is 5.5. What we're getting at today though is how to make a box and whisker plot. So in order to make a box and whisker plot, you need to find the, the maximum, the minimum, and the median. You also, of course, need the Q1 and Q3. And so when we uh, make a box, box and whisker plot, you're going to order the data. And if you're doing it by hand, you know, obviously you can do that. Or you can just put the data in the calculator and, and we'll talk about that. But you find and label the median. You find and label the max, the min, and then you draw a straight line. And I'm gonna and I'm gonna show you how I would do this. And really, I, I do it a little bit differently than even what I'm describing here. But you draw the box and whisker plot basically around the line. And so I'm going to show you how how I would handle this with a set of data. So we have this uh, set of data here, and we want to make a box and whisker plot. And it says find the maximum, minimum, and the quartiles of the following data. And then draw a box and whisker plot and find the range in the interquartile range. So I'm going to draw a number line. And obviously, I'm going to go from 1 to 15. All right, so from 1 to 15. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the data in the stat edit. And I'm going to put the data in exactly as it's presented in the question. Because like I've said, the calculator will take care of entering the data for me. So we're going to go to stat, and now I'm going to do count, and I'm going to calculate the one variable stats. Alright, so obviously when we were talking about z-scores, we looked at mean and standard deviation. But for a box and whisker plot, we do not need that. All we need is this data that's right here. So the minimum is 1, the max is 15, Q1 is 5, the median is 8.5, and Q3 is 11. So let's talk about how I choose to put this data in here. The min and the max get a dot. The Q1, Q2, and Q3 get a line. So if Q1 is at 5, I put a line. If Q2 is at 8.5, I put a line. And if Q3 is at 11, I put a line. As such. Now, I want to make the box first, and then I connect the whiskers to the box. Okay? And so now I can see half of my data is below 8.5, half of my data is above 8.5. A quarter of my data is below 5, a quarter of my data is above 11. Okay. And now that I have that, I can also calculate the range and the interquartile range. And, and that's what we do down here. Now, obviously, here's a little bit more space, so if I wanted to recreate my box and whisker I can do that <clears throat> 
the range is the difference between here and here. So 15 minus 1, my range is 14. The interquartile range is the distance between these two points. So that is 6. Just as a reminder, always type your data into uh, stat edit L1. And again, you're going to click stat, and then you're going to click right arrow calc, and you're going to click enter. Like we always talked about, scroll all the way down. This is the uh, that's all the information you need to create a box risk plot, and you don't need to order your data. Just put it in, and you go from there. So what I, what I want you to do now is create a box and whisker plot using this data and then when you're done go ahead and answer the min, the max, Q1, median, Q3, do the range, enter the quartile range and then I'll pop the answers up. After we're done doing that we're going to go over, you're going to do three more of those on the box and whisker data and then you're going to answer some questions and I'm, going to, I'm not going to give you the answers because I want you to think critically about them but I am going to give you some ideas about where the questions are going. Alright, so there's my box and whisker plot and all of the data that I found for um, that set of data. Now, what I want to be clear on is I said that's my box and whisker plot. Uh, certainly yours could look different if you use a different set of numbers here on the number line. And so, you, and you can use any numbers you want, but I always try to focus in on what is my data. If my data is between uh, 17 or 18 and 30, notice how my box whisker plot, my line data didn't go outside of 15 and 30. Because I just don't want to have to like make a whole bunch of tallies. So your your class work today is to, to make three box and whisker plots. But really what we're getting at here is we want to be able to describe what's going on with data. And I want us to speak specifically to how we answer this question here, for, um, number 12. And it says, what is the total number of games that Team A and Team B scored 55 or more points? Here's 55. I want you to think about what that means. Notice that Team A played in 14 games. The split of the data for Team A is right here. So you need to think how many games are on this side and how many games are on that side. And when I divide 14 by 4, how many games is in each section? 55 for Team B goes right here. So again, it comes down to how many games are on each side of the, the median, okay? And that's what you need to think about. 50% is on each side of the median. 25% is in each section. So that should help you understand how to answer question 12. When you're answering question 13, 14, and 15, and this is what we're really getting into, you are, com you are comparing two box and whisker plots. And so I really want you guys to take your time, read the, read the questions, and really think about what are we comparing? What is the, what does it mean to have a median? And what, you know, again, how many students fit into what we're trying to gauge there, okay? And again, remember, that median splits the data into 50 and 50. So, like I said, do your best with this. I'll check it when you're done, and we'll go over the answers together.